all here, and it's all on us. The American Forces Korea Radio Network. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. Wherever God erects a house of prayer, the devil always builds a chapel there. And twill be found upon examination that the devil has the largest congregation, according to Mr. Daniel Defoe. But it's so hard sometimes to resist the devil. His arguments can be so convincing. And we here below are only human. All too human. I can't convince you, can I, Eddie? I don't care what happens to me. I know. Eddie, I'm sorry. It's just a man has to do what... what he has to do, that's all. He can't help himself. That's right. He can't help himself. I guess I have to say goodbye. Goodbye, Tom. Goodbye, Eddie. Eddie! What is it, Tom? Tom? I just want the bullet holes to be in the front. Our mystery drama, The Most Necessary Evil, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Michael Tolan. Some time ago, a gentleman named Hudson said, You cannot fly like an eagle with the wings of a wren. However, modern technology has proved him wrong. These days, a wren can be given the wings of an eagle. The only problem is, he will still have the mind of a wren. And this has produced much of the trouble that afflicts our poor, battered world. The house is only half finished, but you can see it's going to be a beauty, and it's set back on its own private beach overlooking the blue Atlantic waters. All right, you guys, you can knock off for lunch now. Oh, uh, Mr. Mira. Oh, hello, Miss Blake. Uh, could, could I speak to you for a minute, Mr. Mira? Oh, sure. The, uh, the middle installment is due today, the, the big one. That's right, it was. Well, could... Could you wait till tomorrow? Look, Mrs. Look, Blake. You see, my, my husband went out of town last night, and, and well, he, he won't be home till tomorrow evening. Miss Blake. I, I know, I, I know, Mr. Murray. You're entitled to have your money on time. I, I, I was going to make out the check myself, but, uh, well, I, I looked at our balance, and, and we just don't have enough. Yeah, Mrs. Blake, Look, I, I know, I, I know my husband will make a deposit just as soon as he gets back. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, you're very kind, Mr. Mira. I, I, I don't like to keep people waiting. Waiting for their no, 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 no. What I'm trying to tell you, Miss Blake, is that the installment has been paid. Uh, it's been paid? Yeah. Your husband came down here the day before yesterday, and he paid me himself. Are you sure? You want to pay me twice? No, it, it, it's just that there's no entry in the checkbook, see, and, and, and no record of a deposit to cover it. Uh, are you positive? Sure. But how did he pay you? He paid me. Look, Mrs. Blake, the bill has been paid, and it was paid on time. So I'm satisfied. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Blake. Oh, well, I, I had called you about the suits Mr. Blake had purchased from you people, and um, I, I wanted to know why you hadn't sent the bill. Are you sure? It's already been paid? Yes. Yes, I see. Thank you. Hi, darling. I'm home. Hey, Dora. How do you like my car? Wow. That's all I can say. Wow. Where did you get it, Tom? Just a little thing I picked up at a tag sale. Oh, come on in for a drink. I'll take a rain check. I just had time to drop off your old man. See you for lunch tomorrow, Eddie. Right. Well, how about...
about giving the old man a kiss? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Did you have a good trip? Uh, you know, it was a trip. Well, why, how blasé can you get? You left home day before yesterday. You've been in London, Paris, Amsterdam, and Brussels. And here you are back again two days later. That's miraculous. Yeah, there's really nothing to it. How about dinner? Mm, you can take me out. <laughs> okay. First, I'll have a drink. A drink? You generally don't have a drink in the daytime. Mm, mix one for you? No, thanks. <laughs> what are you scowling about? I'm not scowling. Oh, I know, I know. You're smiling, but the scowl is underneath. What's wrong? I don't know. Well, then maybe nothing's wrong. No. No, there is something wrong. But I don't know what it is. It could be your imagination. Eddie. Eddie, I'm scared. Of what? Something. I'm terrified. <laughs> I have to ask you again. Of what? Eddie, where's the money coming from? The money? We've been saving for years to build the beach house. So? So, today, the middle installment was due. Oh, that's right. I, I, I clean forgot. I better transfer some money from those savings accounts. I went down to see Jake to tell him we'd be late with the check. Well, why did you do that, Dora? I'm handling it. Well, I was going to write out a check myself, but I couldn't. So I thought I'd explain why we'd be late. So what if we'd be what, what if we'd be a day late? But he said you had already paid him. He said that? I didn't see an entry in the checkbook, so I said it was impossible. And then he started to say something, and suddenly he thought better of it. How did you pay him, Eddie? I mean, there, there are other things, too. The suits you bought, my new coat. I, I found out they've all been paid for, but there are no entries in the checkbook. Where's the money coming from? Eddie? I, uh, I don't want to talk about it now. The installment for Jake Miro was $21,000. Where did you get it? Dora, I can't talk about it just now. Why not? Because I... Because I'm not at liberty to... I'm your wife. What am I supposed to think? I don't know. It's just that right now, I, I... I can't talk about it. In other words, you're telling me to mind my business. Hey, now, Dora, don't please... Don't call me Dora. Call me Nora. And build me a little doll's house, and I'll be your pretty little, stupid, little, empty-headed, smiling wife. Where is the money coming please, from? Please, Dora, don't ask me. Very well. From now on, I won't ask you anything. That's a real nothing shot, Eddie. Traveled all of 50 feet. Partner, keep your mind on the game. Yeah. Tom, I... I don't know what to do. About what? About Dora. My Dora giving you trouble? She knows about the money. What does she know about the money? She knows I've got a lot of it. Why'd you let her find out? <laughs> your trouble is you're not married. No, that's not my trouble. It's my salvation. When you're married, it's almost impossible to keep certain things from your wife. All right, you'll have to tell her you make the money. That's your job. She spends it, that's hers. You don't know Dora. What's to know? She's a woman, isn't she? Just tell her politely but firmly, even lovingly, that there are certain things which are simply none of her business. Period. Now, let's play a little golf, shall we? Do, uh, you want to go out tonight? If it pleases, my lord. Dora. Yes, my lord. Oh, come, come on, cut that out. Yes, my lord. Oh, for crying out loud, what's going on anyhow? What's all, what's all this my lord business? Would my lord rather I called him something else? Look, Dora, the joke wasn't all that funny to begin with. Now it's becoming tired. Joke. Would I dare to jest with my lord? Never. All right. Enough is enough. Is my lord pleased with his dinner? You call me my lord just one more Look, time and I... suppose I don't call you my lord. What will that change? I'm supposed to be the empty-headed little lady who keeps your house, keeps you happy, and keeps her mouth shut. I, I just can't tell you. Would you rather my imagination told me, since you can't reveal the source of this money, I have no choice but to assume that there is something crooked about it. There are certain things I can't discuss. Not even with your wife? Even with my wife. As you wish, my lord. 
look, Dora, maybe he won the sweepstakes. Well, then why wouldn't he want to tell me, Tom? Besides, it would have been in the papers. All right, look, he's been gambling, and he doesn't want you to know about Tom, it. Tom, Tom, I am scared out of my wits. Why, honey? Well, it's an awful lot of money. Thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. Well, then why doesn't he make it? Something's wrong. Dora, why do you insist? Because I'm his wife. I can tell. Help him. Will you? All right, but how? I, I'm, I'm not sure, but ask him what, what kind of trouble he's in. Well, why do you say he's in trouble? Because I can feel it. A wife knows. Could be all in your imagination. Promise me you'll talk to him and help him. Please. <laughs> all right, Dora. I'll see what I can do. Well, how do you like it so far, Mr. Blake? Jake, it looks pretty good. Hey, listen, Mr. Blake, I'm a little sorry. About what? Well, you know, when your missus was out here a week or so, I thought she knew how you was paying. I just, uh, I hope I didn't say anything that was out of turn, you know? It'll all work itself out. Oh, sure, sure. These things always do. Well, I better get back there in the middle of things, keep everybody on the ball. Just holler if you need anything. I will. Thanks, Jake. Hello, Eddie. Hey, Tom. Yeah, they said I'd find you here. Well, that's going to be quite a house, hmm? Huh? Dora and I have been dreaming about this since we were married. Twelve years. And now, finally, it's coming true. Eddie, I have to tell you something. What? Uh, let's, let's go sit in my car and get away from all this racket. Eddie, I saw Harvey last night. What did he want to see you about? I wanted to see him. Why? I met Dora for a drink yesterday afternoon. Dora? She's very upset. I know. She asked me to see if I could help out whatever jam that you're in. Now, you can imagine how the conversation went. Yeah. As we talked, I realized what a serious thing this is with her, so I figured I'd better check it out with Harvey. Hey, this is a personal thing between me and my wife. Is it? Tell me, Eddie. Is she going to be satisfied with whatever you tell her? No. Is she going to keep prying and trying every which way she can to find out what's going on? Huh? Eddie, come on, the truth. Yeah, that's what Harvey said. So then what's the future? What do you mean by the future? The future, the place where we're all going to spend the rest of our lives. How do I know what the future is? I guess you don't. That's why we have people like Harvey. They see right into it. What does Harvey claim he can see? This kind of situation where she'll keep at you, Eddie, until one day she breaks you down and forces you to tell her. I swore I'd never tell anybody. Eddie, I'm trying to help you. Harvey is trying to help you. You understand that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, sure. So looking at the thing objectively, there's only one solution. You have to divorce her, Eddie. Divorce? Do what are you saying? I'm saying it's an order, Eddie. It's an order. Just when we thought we'd heard everything, here are new grounds for divorce. Amor omnia winket, said the Latin poet. Love conquers all. Does it? Be patient. We shall find out shortly when I return with Act Two. Mr. Artemus Ward died in 1867, so you can understand how old his jokes must be. However, most of them are still fresh and even more meaningful than ever. When Mr. Ward said, Let us all live within our means, even if we have to borrow money to do it. Wasn't he describing the problem that faces so many of us today? Yes, these days. How do we live within our means? All right, just hold it. You and Harvey can't tell me I have to divorce my wife. Cool down, Eddie. Who do you think you're talking to? This is my own personal affair. You don't have any personal affairs, hey, Eddie. Just a minute, Tom. Neither you nor Harvey nor anybody else is going to come into my bedroom and tell me Harvey what to do. Harvey can come into any room in your house any time he feels the operation is in danger. Okay. Okay. Goodbye. Where are you going? I'm out. What are you out of? The whole business. I quit. I'm sorry, Eddie. It's my fault. I should never have gotten you into it. I told you at the very beginning, once you're in, you're in for good. <laughs> for good? All right, for bad. But you're in. You're in forever. You just can't grab a quick buck and say thank you and goodbye. I thought I made that clear. I see now that I didn't. 
Look, I'm sorry, Eddie. There are times when I'd like to get out, too, but this is a college that doesn't have any alumni. Only dead ones. I'll keep my mouth shut, Tom, I swear. It doesn't work that way. Harvey's giving you a break. Look, Harvey could say get rid of him. Get rid of him. But he doesn't. He comes up with this extremely logical solution. Yeah, logical. Divorcing my wife. Eddie, the marriage is gone. We love each other. What does love have to do with it? She'll pester you until she gets the truth out of you. She'll say, quit or I'll divorce you, and you can't quit, so... Tom, please. And if she does find out, that introduces another problem. <sighs> I only wanted to make a little more money. Eddie, there's only one way. Believe me, you have to divorce her. How, how can I divorce her? What can I tell her? You tell her there's another woman. Oh, she knows I never look at other women. Harvey can get you one for this purpose that any guy would look at. I can't do it. I simply cannot do it. You want me to tell that to Harvey? Yes. No. I don't know. Oh. Let me think about it. I was down to see the house today, Dora. It's, it's in great shape. That Jake Meir, he sure knows his business. Well, what, what's, uh, what's this now? You're not going to talk to me? At all? Ever? We're, we're not going to have any conversation? Conversation. From the Latin, conversare, meaning to live together. Therefore, to talk about intimate, important things. I'm willing to have a conversation. How about you? Dora... I, I'm in trouble. Yeah, I know that, Eddie. What kind of trouble? I, I can't tell you. Why not? It would be dangerous. Are you in danger now, Eddie? Yes. Well, then why shouldn't I share it with you? What would happen to the kids? Oh, it's that kind of danger. Yeah. I never thought that... Oh, what's the use? It looks so easy. What looks so easy? No, don't, don't try to find out. Just let me talk to myself. I'll try to find a way out. Can I help you? No. That's the terrible thing. Just when I, I need you most, I put myself in a spot where you can't help me. Well, where are you going? I have to see somebody. Who? I can't tell you. That's all part of it. It's late. Yeah. But maybe it's not too late. <laughs> It's, uh, it's me, Tom. Hey, it's almost 11 o'clock. I, uh, I have to see you right away. Can't it wait? No. I'm coming right over. Look, I, uh, I have a friend here. Oh. She'd be embarrassed. It, it's important. Where are you now? A phone booth on West 18th, across the street from the all-night gas station. All right, go to the next block, River Road, and turn right and park. There's a bench facing the water. We can sit and talk for a couple of minutes. <laughs> I told you, Eddie, you can't quit. Maybe, maybe one man can't. But how about two? Two? The both of us. Why would I want to quit? Because, Tom, in, in your heart, you don't belong with Harvey in that crowd. I don't? No, Tom. You got in for the same reason I did. It was a quick buck. And it was worth double since you didn't have to account for it. Come on, Tom. I know you like a book. We grew, we grew up together. You don't belong in this thing. Eddie, the trouble with books is that people read them and form their own interpretation. I belong with Harvey. I guess you had me wrong all these years. No, Tom. Grow up, will you? We're not two little freckle-faced kids anymore. We're not Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. Life is real. You make this kind of bed, you lay in it forever. Then I'll do it alone. You'll do what alone? Go to the district attorney. That's what Harvey said you'd do eventually. You can't talk me out of it. I know. I don't care what happens to me. I know that, too. Eddie, I'm sorry. It's just a man has to do what... what he has to do. He can't help himself. That's right. He can't help himself. I guess I, I just better say goodbye, Tom. Goodbye, Eddie. Eddie. What is it, Tom? I just want the bullet holes to be in the front. Eddie. Eddie.
He's dead, Lieutenant. Yeah, I see. Ambulance isn't here yet, huh? Are you the one that found him? Yeah, I was on patrol. Driving by, and I see this body lying on the ground. How long ago? Uh, my watch, uh, four minutes. Uh-huh. Well, he's wearing his ring, his watch here. Let me see if he's got his wallet. Yeah. Huh. Some big bills here, too. So it wasn't robbery. Well, let's see. Mr. Edward C. Blake. Uh-huh. Uh, Muller, check the glove compartment of that car. See if it says... Uh, let's uh, get out of the way. Lieutenant, car's registered in the name of Edward C. Blake. Yeah. Now, that figures. He came here, he parked, he got out of the car... Why, Lieutenant? Well, he must have met someone, and whoever it was shot him. Uh, Muller, go over the ground, see if you can find anything, uh, anything at all. Kid. What do you think, Lieutenant Crane? What do I think? In a case like this, until proved otherwise, I always say, look for a dame. <laughs> Sorry, I have to ask you these questions. It's all right, Lieutenant Crane. Please ask me. Did uh, Mr. Blake have any problems? He was worried sick. About what? He said it was too dangerous for me to know. It had all to do with this mysterious money? Absolutely. You say he was an engineer? He was assistant to the vice president in charge of international plants and maintenance for general communications. What did he do there? The company has installations all over the world. He would have to travel all the time to inspect them. Oh, don't you see, Lieutenant Crane? Don't I see what? Well, since he traveled so much, he he may have been involved with smuggling of some sort. Well, what else could it have been? Uh, tell me, did he ever give you cause to be jealous? In what way? The usual way. Because of another woman? Oh, no. No, not him. No, never him. You're sure? Well, you have no right to make these insinuations. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mrs. Blake. It's a question that has to be asked. What happened last night? He left the house. It was almost 11. Did you ask him where he was going? He wouldn't tell me. But I, I, I could sense he was headed somewhere to meet someone and to, to have a showdown. And that's all you can tell me? Yes. Can you tell me anything? I'm afraid not. At this time. At this time. <laughs> well, that's very good officialese, isn't it? It's always what the police say when they don't have the faintest idea what's going on. I'm sorry. As soon as we know anything, we'll tell you. Please. I promise. Oh, Dora. Oh, Tom. Tommy. I can't believe it. He can't be gone from us. Not Eddie. Poor Tom. Listen to me, will you? I'm supposed to be comforting you. Your being here is a comfort to me. I know you loved him. It's just that we go back so far. I mean, you know, when weren't we pals? Dora, I want you to know my friendship with Eddie can never be broken. And that extends to you and to the kids. I mean, I, I want to talk to you about practical things. It hasn't really hit me yet. Dory, do you need any help with... With the arrangements? Oh, would you please, Tommy? I, I'm just not sure I can go through with it. It's taken care of. Money? Oh, I understand we have quite a bit of that. Well, it won't last forever. Well, there's, there's his pension and insurance. Look, I, I, I don't want to talk about money. Money killed him. Why? We didn't need all that much. He was a man. He saw it differently. He got himself mixed up with criminals. We don't really know that for a fact, Dora. Well, what else could it have been? I don't know. But isn't it obvious? Where else would the money be coming from if, it, if he weren't tied up with smuggling or something like it? When there, and there was that stupid detective... What stupid detective? Lieutenant Crane, supposed to be in charge of the operation. You know what he said? Eddie might have been mixed up with a woman. <laughs> Eddie? He doesn't know Eddie the way we did. I can see it now. It'll be in the papers for two, three days, and then it'll all just disappear. Don't feel that way, Dora. The police usually do a good job. Look, what you need is some rest. And I have a lot of details to take care of. I know. 
You're a good friend to him, Tommy. The best friend a man ever had. Yes? Harvey, it's Tom. And? It seems the police might be willing to believe that Eddie was killed by a jealous woman. I see. You suppose we could create a jealous woman? No problem, Thomas. No problem. With some people, it seems, nothing is a problem. However, this must give one pause. After all, we're reasonably certain Eddie was faithful to Dora, and now that he's dead, how can you possibly find the jealous woman who killed him? Especially since we were there and we know the identity of the real murderer. Patience. These things usually sort themselves out in Act Three. say there are only two or three human stories, and they keep repeating themselves as fiercely as if they'd never happened before. Love, hate, deception, money. Mix and match. That's what we're doing for you right now. Uh, you want me to fill her up? I'd rather you could fill me up. What? I'm from Homicide. Oh. What can I do for you? Were you around here last night? Me? I'm around here every night. You can't get kids to work no more. Who wants to sell gas at night? Besides, you're a sitting duck for all them hold-up guys. There was a man murdered a couple of blocks down around the corner on River Road. Oh, yes. I heard it on the news this morning. What was it? A robbery or something? Uh, we don't know. It was about a quarter after 11. Where were you? I was just inside having my coffee. Did you see anything? Hear anything? Did I see anything? No. Did I hear something? Yes. I must have heard the shots, except I thought they were backfires, you know. So I didn't think about it. Did you hear anything else? Oh, uh, no. We have this idea. There was a meeting. The dead man and the killer each came in their own car. The killer got away in his. Would you have seen a car come down the street along about that time? Oh, no. Are you sure? Yes, when I'm sitting in that chair, I can't see the road out the window. Uh, but but now that you mention it, I, I did hear a car. Oh, yes? Yes, it came from River Road. It made the turn and came past here. Then I could hear it make a turn again. Hmm, that'd have to be on Sessions, which, uh, which means it had to turn right. Sessions is one way. It turned... Right on Sessions. Mm, and it was making time, let me tell you. It turned into Sessions. Okay, maybe we can pick up the trail. Mr. Herrick, I understand you were his best friend. That's right. His wife says he might have been tied in with smuggling. What do you think? I don't know. He traveled a lot. There seems to be money she couldn't account for. Look, as far as money goes... He did some consulting on the side. Why did he keep it a secret? Well, he had no other choice. The company would have fired him. Couldn't he trust his wife with that information? Well, no. Why not? Because, oh, I don't know, it's all mixed up. Look, don't say that I told you, but he had another woman. She denies it. Well, either she doesn't know or her pride forces her to deny it. You know how women are. Not really. How did you uh, know about this uh, other woman? Well, Eddie could never keep a secret from me. That's why I don't buy this smuggling story. I'd have wormed it out of him. But Carrie passed her? Oh, yeah. She was something else. Carrie passed her? Absolutely breathtaking blonde and on the make. I told him she'd be trouble. He wouldn't listen. What kind of trouble? Uh, you know, sometimes a girl like that decides you're the guy she's going to marry. And you can't shake her. Especially if you've been leading her on. Had he promised to marry her? He would have promised her anything. Listen, if she'd have looked at me the way she looked at him, I'd have promised her anything, too. And so would you. I kept telling him, get out, Eddie. Get out before it's too late. But he didn't listen. Carrie passed her. Where does she live? <laughs> Yeah. 
Are you the landlady? Me? <laughs> nah. I'm the superintendent. Truth is, I'm just the janitor. What do you want? My identification. Hey, a cop, huh? Hey, <laughs> you want to come in? Thank you. I've been uh, ringing Carrie Pastor's bell. There's no answer. Well, there ain't about to be an answer either. She flew the coop. What? Well, you know how these little pigeons are. Here today, gone tomorrow. You know where she went? How do I know where she went? I don't even know where she come from. Well, didn't she need some kind of uh, identification to rent an apartment? Nah. All she needed was money and to behave herself. What can you tell me about her? Oh, sharp little cookie. Great looks. She was out to hook a rich guy. Where did she work? She worked in her apartment. What are you telling me? Oh, she's the kind of dame that, you know, goes to work on a guy. You know what I mean? I mean, she hits him for money, clothes, or rent. If she was as great looking as you say, why did she settle for a dump like this? She could have done much better, hmm? We used to talk about that, her and me. You know what she said? If all you want from a guy is dough... Grab all you can get. But if you want him to marry you, don't let him set you up too good. It's that way he feels he's giving you enough. Keep it poor. Keep him guilty. Yeah. Did you ever meet the guy? I'd see him come in, go out. He, he's the one that was killed the other night. Oh, I recognize the picture. O also the name. Edward Blake. What can you tell me about their relationship? Oh, she was crazy about him. Look, I seen hustlers work in my time. <laughs> you, you wouldn't know it to look at me, but I wound a few guys around my fingers myself once. And she really loved him. How do you know? Well, she told me. She'd come down here for a drink, you know. She'd cry on my shoulder. I told her, I says... Honey, they never leave their wives. And so, so she says, if I can't have him, nobody will. Well, I figured it was just the booze talking. I don't know. She might have meant it, huh? And you really can't tell me anything about her, can you? What's to tell? Games like that, ships are passing the night. I'd like to take a look around the apartment. Oh, please. Be my guest. Sarah Clegg. Well? I think the lieutenant bought it. You must have done a good job. <laughs> I almost believed it myself. Hey, how, how long do you want me to stay here? It's going to be a while. Until we're sure all the dust is settled. Lola, get this description out. It's the blonde... Her name is Carrie Pastor. It's probably not a real name. That's all we had to go on. Yes, who are you? Uh, my name is, uh, is Michael Dempsey. Why do you look so familiar? You spoke to me. I own the gas station on West 18. Oh, yes, 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 yes. What can I do for you? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's crazy. I talked it over with the wife. She said it was crazy. What's crazy? Well, one little thing. It can give you the whole ball of wax. Or, on the other hand, it don't have to mean a thing. You, you asked me if I heard something that night. I did. And I said I heard a car go past. Yes, I remember. But I says to myself, why didn't I tell that cop more? About what? About what kind of car it was. You said you couldn't see it. Yeah, but I could hear it. What did you hear? Well, you know, the average car is a car. They all sound alike. Some might be better tuned than others, that's all. What are you trying to tell me? I remember about this car. It had the smoothest engine sound. Smooth like silk. Like good whiskey, you know. Well, to my ear. So? So, it's barreling down West 18th. Now, he has to slow down for the turn onto Sessions, okay? Yes, okay. When you're going all out and you got to slow down, you know what happens. You lose the speed and need the power to make the turn. You get that whine in the transmission. But in this car, even that whine was smooth because the friction was less on account of... 
Ah, uh, look. All I can say is, it had to be one of the world's most expensive sports cars. Like what? Like a Merletti. No, better than that. This could have been a nice Sata Asmara. Hmm. Hmm. What else? Well, that's it. And now that I think about it, what have I really told you? Late at night, I hear what I think is an expensive sports car racing down the street. What's the uh, name of that car again? Well, there's all kinds, you know. But I figure it could have been the Merletti or the Isata Asmara. Yeah. Oh, now look, it, it don't mean the guy driving it was the one that done it. He could have just been coming by, you know. Well, thank you for coming by. Uh, you think I helped? You never know. <laughs> Is everything okay, Dora? No. But everything is not okay. I'm sorry. It's just that I feel it's all been put on a back burner. Don't the police tell you anything? Oh, yes. We're working on it. We're following leads. We expect to have a break very soon. Meanwhile, the days go by, the weeks. Soon it'll be months. And then it'll be last year's murder. I'm sure they're doing the best they can. Ah, oh, this mystery woman angle, it's wrong. They're wasting their time. Oh, Dora, you can't let your pride... But it's true. I know Eddie better than anyone. There was no other woman. Well, how do you account for that landlady's story? It's a lie. Why would she lie? There are people who'll do anything to get their names in the papers. Have another drink. No. I want to go to police headquarters. Will it do any good? I don't care. You have to pester them. But Dora... Could you give me a lift, Tom? Want me to go in with you? Wait. Th that's him. Hmm? That's the lieutenant coming out of the building. Probably on his way to lunch. I'm going to have it out with him right here. Oh, Dora. Uh, L lieutenant Crane? Hmm? Oh, it's uh, you, Mrs. Blake. Yes, it's me. What's been happening? I'll tell you, nothing. You're following that phony other woman angle. Uh, Mrs. Blake. But why don't you believe me? You're afraid to take on the real criminals, the smugglers. Maybe they're too powerful for you to handle. Now, uh, Dora, you mustn't say that. Why not? It's the truth. Oh, uh, it's you, Mr. Herrick. P please forgive her. She's distraught. Dora, let me take you home. Why won't anybody believe me? Is this uh, your car, Mr. Herrick? Oh, yeah, it's my one extravagance. Come on, Dora. Everything will be all right. You'll see. Oh, Tommy. Tommy, nobody does anything. Nobody. What are we parked here for, Lieutenant? He's bound to pass by sooner or later. Who? I want you to tell me. Wait. Listen. Close your eyes. Just listen. Hey, I hear something. Keep listening. That whine. It's the same whine. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Lieutenant Crane, do you have any news for me? I'm looking for Tom Herrick. Is he here? Oh, yes. W won't you come in? Thank you. Uh, Hello, Lieutenant. Hello, Mr. Herrick. Any news about the lady who killed Eddie? There was no lady. I told you. I told you. Then who killed him? Don't you know? How would he know? Ask him. What could she ask me? You were right all along, Mrs. Blake. There is a ring of smugglers. And they did use your husband as a messenger. That's where all that money came from. Isn't that true, Mr. Herrick? What would I know about it? You recruited him. Therefore, you were responsible for him. Therefore, when he wanted out, you had to take care of him. Tom! It's a lie. You're an accountant for general communications. You make $27,000 a year. How can you drive an Isoto... I, I told you, it's my one extravagance. You live in a penthouse on East Grant. Every stitch you wear is custom made. Well, what is he saying? He can't prove a word of it. Well, then why should he accuse you? We're going to keep you under watch like a bug beneath the microscope, Mr. Harry. You won't learn a thing. You can't prove a thing. Yes, I know. We won't have to. You're going to tell us. 
Of your own free will. We won't be able to stop you from talking. Tom! You're out of your head, Lieutenant. Your only chance is to come downtown with me now and sign a confession. Why should I sign anything if I'm innocent? Dora, believe me. Eddie and I, we were kids together. If you don't, I'm going to walk out of here and forget the whole business. But the people you work for, they'll see that you are under surveillance. They'll know you're under suspicion. What would your life be worth then? Only we can save you, Mr. Herrick. Do I go downtown with you or without you? Tom, you didn't kill him. Mr. Herrick, I'm leaving. No, no, Lieutenant. He couldn't kill his best friend. When money is your master, you don't have any friends. Tell him he's lying. Tom, Tom, tell him he's lying. Well, Mr. Herrick, what do you say? Take me with you, Lieutenant. Take me with you. Tom! That one word, that cry of disbelief or of awakening awareness, she speaks for everyone who has been betrayed. And at one time or another, that's probably every one of us. Love, hate, lust, and betrayal. These weave the very stuff of drama. And I'll be back to finish the design shortly. When you have money for a master, you don't have any friends, according to Detective Lieutenant Crane. Money. It enchants. It enslaves. It builds a palace and transforms it into a prison. It buys a man's soul and a woman's honor. It is the most potent force in the world. Yet how common. Like a woman of easy virtue, it will serve anyone. It isn't at all particular. If only it weren't the most necessary of all the evils. Our cast included Michael Tolan, Carol Titel, Mandel Kramer, and Ralph Bell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams.